according to all historical records, no civilization, anyway, to my knowledge, has ever sit back to plan the future. Exactly what we're going to do, how we're going to live, how we're going to work out transportation. No. We just build highways all over the place. You learn that a straight line is the shortest distance between two given points. Well, look at a road map of the United States, and I think you'll find spaghetti all over the place. Look at your cities, every building a different size and shape. This does not express individuality. It's utter chaos. At 4 o'clock, all the cars come out of this building, and they can't get across that bridge. So you've got to build another bridge. So you elect people to political office that are totally incompetent. They are neurally bankrupt. I don't care whether you're Democrat or Republican. They don't have the value system to solve these problems that exist. They are not educated in that way. They are brought up with a uniform set of values. Human beings get stuck in rigid patterns of behavior. Patterns of behavior that accumulate over many generations form the different customs and traditions that then lead to the formation of culture and society. Depending on the goals of the society, the civilization will vary in its architectural design. As displayed earlier, there is no plan for the future in our society. Our society lives in the now and makes things up as it goes along. So the design of our civilization reflects the mind state of society, a people with no plan for the future, a people who accept the world that has been presented. This wouldn't be an issue if it weren't for the methods of which we cultivate energy, govern people, and harvest food. Whether people want to accept it or not, the facts are that the civilizations currently existing are destroying the earth. We design civilization in a manner that disregards the circle of life. This is made apparent from the sky, and it is even more apparent from space where cities look like cancer growing on the earth. Not only this, but the people who inhabit these civilizations war with each other. Despite all of us being members of the human family tree, we violently extract resources from the earth only to waste them on consumption production, only to waste them on warfare. Some say this is how things are supposed to be, but when taking into account all that we have learned throughout the series, we can recognize the fact that humanity is capable of redesigning our experience on this planet. Part 1. A Resource-Based Economy If we consider at some time, which society will, at a later time, I hope it would be sooner, that all of the Earth become the common heritage of all nations. All of the resource of the Earth, the common heritage of all nations. And if you believe in God, if you understand the teachings of all religions, there were no property lines in heaven, no banks, no personal positions in which one person is elevated above another. That if the earth were the common heritage of all nations and all of the artificial boundaries removed that separate people, there would be no basis for war, no basis for armament, the world you live in is an old world, its language is old, its values are old. A resource-based economy is a world without money, a world where machines are doing the menial tasks, computers handle agriculture, and humans simply live. In your society, there are no mayors of cities. There, there are no mayors, there are no politicians, and you don't have to fill out any forms to go to the art center or music center, and you go to a university whether you can afford it or not. John Lennon made a song called Imagine, which outlines a reality that runs parallel with the one outlined by Jacques. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there's no countries, nothing to kill or die for, and no religion too. Imagine no possessions, no need for greed or hunger, a brotherhood of man. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. Science reveals certain facts that educated minds should apply to their societies. These facts should and will create the mental conditions that render war, segregation, division, and classism obsolete. These facts are, we are all one and connected. The atoms that comprise you and all things are from the Earth, which in turn is traced back to the stars, which then are traced back to the singularity before the Big Bang. We define family by the relation in DNA, and yet biology reveals that all life is related, meaning that all life is family. DNA, like all things, is made up of the elements of the Earth. So if we define family by molecular fundamentals, we can apply this to our relation to the Earth and to the universe itself. 
and understanding which becomes the philosophy of a resource-based society. Many cannot grasp the concept of this world without money due to the mental conditioning put in place by the world that has been presented to us since birth, as demonstrated in the videos leading up to this one. So all of the artificial structures and artificiality of all societies, they are all primitive today. They are all backward. The very fact that we use political systems, the very fact that there are Democrats and Republicans and notions about how the world ought to be governed. Part two, city design, agriculture, and energy. Jacques Fresco lays out a wide array of possibilities for city design, or better, city redesign. The shift from the old paradigm to the new paradigm will create countless jobs for the generations taking part in this phasing process. This shouldn't be too hard to imagine, considering that a large portion of the human population are forced to work at jobs that they are not even passionate about, many of which are pointless jobs, wasting the Earth's resources. So, during the phasing process, humans will redesign cities and agriculture. My own personal vision for agriculture in particular will include various systems perfectly suited to the environment of the specified area. For instance, we can install massive agriculture columns. These towers will be large enough to house up to 100 stories of greenhouse grown vegetation. Instead of clear cutting land and destroying the biodiversity of the planet, we can use the same space and utilize it in the form of these towers. This way, we can prevent contaminating the soil with pesticides, as these towers have the sufficient systems put in place to control all the elements of the yield. Permaculture will be utilized for areas that are lush with vegetation, as for the design of future cities, the possibilities are endless. But how are we to power these cities? As it turns out, the profit-driven structure of our society capitalizes on resources and maintains businesses based on the cultivation of these resources. We have been told that all other methods of obtaining energy are unreliable and insufficient, which is a complete lie made by those who wish to preserve the system set in place. The new methods of cultivating power will be solar, wind, tidal, geothermal power. This method alone can power the Earth's civilizations for millions of years. The question is not how do we make a better world, the question is when. Part 3. Free Society What the Venus Project has to offer is a way of life without ambiguity, a language that has a, a much more precise form of communication to change the relationship between people. Because a real free society, the closest I've ever come to it, I lived in the South Pacific Islands for a while, and the natives gave me bananas and coconuts, all that. They were very generous, and they had no word for work. Would you believe that? They went fishing all day, they played, they had luau's. It was a different value system. Now, the men and women walked around nude on the island when I got it a long time ago. And I never saw a native poke another native, hey, get a load of that chick. None of that. They looked at the eyes of women when they talked to them. Never, hey, look at that. Never at the legs. The motion picture cameras and all your movie theaters are dolling up and down the hindquarters and all. And you wonder why men are like that. They are not like that. They are made like that by culture. A simple choice is all it takes. A choice to shift out of an obsolete paradigm and into a better one. One that makes sense. One that focuses on education rather than maximizing profit. What does a civilization without money or governments even look like? Simply put, it is a civilization consisted of people who are not confined to any ideology, but a people who are educated in all areas of reality from early childhood. Science provides an excellent basis for this culture. As we've seen throughout history, ignorance was the fundamental basis behind all atrocities that man has committed to one another. Political ideologies, religious ideologies, and any man-made ideology that has been designed to separate us into groups, alienating us from one another because of distorted value systems instilled by corrupt societal engineers of each empire. Which is why this call for a new paradigm is ever so prevalent. Human beings are currently trapped within an ideological matrix. Religion, class, society, culture, countries, and at the heart of it all, monetary gain. Raising children by way of education in all areas of science will provide the leeway for the first generation of neo-humans, a people who view the earth as the common heritage of all people, the mother of all life, and a people who see themselves as a part of a system that is as expansive as the universe itself.
In this free society, human beings will be experiencing reality to a degree of quality that exceeds the quality of life of all the billionaires of the world. Then what will happen to us? There's no trace of my money. My office is gone. What will I do? How will I live? This is the 24th century. Material needs no longer exist. Then what's the challenge? The challenge, Mr. Offenhaus, is to improve yourself. To enrich yourself. Enjoy it. Machines will do all the menial tasks, such as agriculture and cultivation of resources, while human beings control it all through computers. We would be able to restore the Earth to its full glory while still maintaining our technological advancements, thus changing our species from a cancer to, once again, part of the circle of life. Yeah.